Well, good afternoon, everyone. So great to have you join with us tonight. Hey, it's going to be a great show tonight. We're so excited to be able to come tonight and just celebrate all of our armed forces, those that are served. Uh, we want to honor them tonight and just uh, lift them up before the Lord and encourage them. We have a great guest with us tonight, and we're excited about uh, sharing with you tonight. So, Keely, good to have you tonight. Thanks for joining us, Keely Ingram and uh, Carol Locklear. Good to have you. Brother Anthony's on with us. Amen. Uh, so, Rachel from Mississippi, good to see you, Rachel. Thanks for joining with us. Listen, do us a favor. If you know someone that's in the military or family or friends or, or have served in the military, hey, shoot them a line. Send this here. Send the show to them. They need to watch tonight. Uh, we're just going to just join in together. Here's some word and uh, encourage one another and lift them up before the Lord. Sister Megan Price, good to see you on tonight. Thanks for joining with us. Go ahead and share and like if you will. Thank you guys for spending some time with us tonight. It's going to be a great time in the Lord. We just believe God's going to encourage the broken and those who are suffering, those that are, that are hurting. Uh, we live in a difficult time, but we know the Lord is on our side and the Lord is faithful and His grace and mercy, amen, endures and uh, He's doing some great things. We're excited tonight to share some truths of God's Word with you. And as we honor tonight, again, as I said earlier, we want to just speak into the lives of our service men and women around the world. We're on uh, Roku, look up uh, lifenow.tv, Apple uh, TV. You can go there and watch live tonight as well. Uh, there you go. Sister Carol's watching on the, the Roku channel. All right. Sister Carol's just going live and it's doing good. Praise the Lord. Hope everyone can hear well. If you're having any problems, please let us know. We'll get it corrected. So, you, hey, just share, like, let everyone know that we're on tonight. It's a very special night. Listen, we had 4th of July celebration, mm -hmm. Independence Day, last weekend. And, uh, you know, and, and we celebrated the birth of this great nation. We're, uh, you know, I just want to say personally how honored I am and privileged I am to live in uh, uh, America, to live in a great country that we can do what we're doing even tonight, have the freedoms to do what we're doing, to share the gospel around the world and tell the good news of Jesus Christ that he come, give his life, that you and I could have life tonight. So, uh, hey, if you're unsaved, you don't know him tonight, it might be a great night, amen, to give your heart to the Lord and experience true freedom in your own life personally. And so it's an honor for us tonight and uh, to live in this country. We celebrated it, you know, but we just want to felt in our heart. We wanted to put together a show uh, and invite a good friend of ours, great man of God. Uh, and we, we appreciate him and the gift that God has in his life. So I want to welcome tonight, uh, amen, good friend of ours, man of God. God's using powerful ways. A chaplain, uh, Chris Perry. Hey, Amen, man, man. So great to have you with us tonight, man. Thanks for joining with us. He's going to share some intro, some truths with us tonight, and some some details. Uh, he's still, you're still active and serving. So just greet everybody. Tell everybody about yourself a little right. bit, man. Look there at that camera. Yeah. Tell them a little bit about Chris so, Perry tonight. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> Appreciate it. Uh, first off, thank you for having me and just being a part of this show. And uh, definitely grateful. Um, so Chris Perry, uh, chaplain in the army, um, and um, yeah, just uh, love the Lord. He called me to uh, this ministry, um, uh, man, out of the blue. Um, definitely wasn't my plan. I will tell you that for sure. Uh, definitely it was all him. And uh, never in a million years, I tell people all the time, would I ever think that I would be a chaplain, you know, in the army? Yeah. You know, um, so I had a different plan, and God said no. Uh, you're going to do what I want you to do. So that's that's where I'm at. So, yeah, I appreciate it. Well, I definitely can, re I definitely can relate to that, man. <laughs> but, you know, that's what being a, a, a you know, a, a follower of the Lord Jesus Christ is, is to follow him. Yeah, you know, uh, God knows what's best for our life. And, uh, and so he has a purpose and a destiny. Yeah. He told the promise, he said, before you were formed in your mother's womb, I, I you, right. you ordained, you called, you know. So, so right. we, we, we're walking out destiny. And That's I know right. uh, what you do, you take it to heart. We've had conversations before. Yeah. I want to say thank you again for joining with us tonight yeah. and uh, sharing some truths. Yeah. So, so I wanted to just, before we get into scripture tonight, I wanted to just take a few moments just to kind of maybe talk a little bit about some of the positives, 
goods and difficulties uh, that you face as being a chaplain. You enter into people's lives uh, in the, that serve with their families that oftentimes is difficult times. Yeah. And I know that's got to be really, really tough as a pastor for many years myself, yeah. uh, being with families and had to go to families and be with families in difficult times. Yeah. So uh, maybe just talk a little bit about that. I want to get in details, but just a little bit, share your heart a little bit about that yeah. as we talk to uh, veterans and talk to military men and women today. Yeah, yeah. so... Um, so I'll tell you, I so I have a, a mentor, chaplain mentor of mine. I think he summed it up best. He said that, um, he said, Chris, he said, we get invited into people's lives and into their homes on the best of days and on the worst of days. Um, and so uh, having that uh, in the back of my mind, um, you know, as I go in and, and, and do the, the work that God has called me, I'll tell you that um, it is, um, it's very sobering. It's very eye-opening. Um, you know, we have a lot of good moments, but we have some 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 bad moments too. Um, and I will tell you that um, though, through it all, God gets to glory. Um, and and just being able to uh, speak into people's lives, um, being able to uh, help them in the midst of crisis, uh, in the midst of brokenness, in the midst of uh, you name it. But also being able to celebrate, you know, some of the happy moments, uh, whether it's marriages, whether it's births of children, you know, th those things. And so, um, I will tell you that being a chaplain um, is, I believe, exactly what I'm supposed to be doing. Um, it is not, it's not like your normal ministry where you know everybody's in four walls of church. Um, you're out in the middle of it with with them, right? You know, we, we I jump out of airplanes with them. Uh, you know, we're out in the field together. You know, we 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 embrace those times, and when you embrace those times with them, uh, that's when you earn their trust to speak into their lives and into their families' lives. So, uh, so that's 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 kind of uh, uh, just the, the, the quick uh, summary of kind of you know what what we do. Uh, yeah. Awesome, man. As always, so stony night. Good to have you. Thanks for joining with us from all the way up in PA. Up north, close in New York City, big city up there. It's good to have you. Thanks for joining with us. Brother Jimmy, good to see you tonight. You and uh, Brother Sister Bonnie and, uh, you know, friends, folks are just joining in. Hey, go ahead and share the light. It's going to be a great time tonight. So, so Chris just shared a little bit with us tonight about some of the ups and downs. One of the things that uh, the Lord kind of put in our heart tonight, we're going to go to, want to go to the book of John chapter 15 tonight and talk a little bit about this. One of the things that that it, that uh, I've never served in the military. Uh, I, uh, I remember a little quick story a little bit. Uh, I was had been married very long and my brother-in-law, my wife's brother, me and him had agreed to go into the, the military together. Wow. The buddy system yeah. kind of thing. Man, we had did it all except actually signing the last paperwork to go and I chickened out. <laughs> I chickened out, uh, and uh, he went in. He went on in and had a, uh, you know, he's retired now, but uh, you know, he had all all his years and serving. And uh, you know, his name's Chuck Chuck Drew in San Antonio, and uh, so I chickened out, and uh, I, I I was uh, really disappointed uh, years later because I was like, man, I've never been a chicken of anything really. Uh, but then years later, I found out I really believed that God had a different direction for my life. And so God works in mysterious ways. So one of the things that we want to dive in tonight and talk a little bit about is to talk about uh, the cost of the military life. Uh, and, the, and one of the first things when I was, when the Lord put that topic in my heart a little bit, the first thing that popped out was sacrifice. Mm -hmm. So we want to we want to go to the scripture and talk a little bit and, and, and think about sacrifice, yeah. uh, and and you know that's in different levels uh, of, of of what a person can give. But in the military, uh, I think uh, it's it's a commitment that if need be, right. it c comes to the ultimate sacrifice, right. uh, and not many things besides the armed services has that kind of commitment. Right. Uh, and so, I know our police officers and others that serve, 
community that serve uh, and come to that place. Uh, before I get into scripture, listen, if you have a question tonight for uh, our guest, uh, Mr. Uh, Chris, a chaplain, my man, my man of God over here, he's a great guy. Hey, uh, send it in. We'll, we'll try to answer that question. I just wanted to say thank you again. Thank you, everyone, for joining with us. Great host of folks joining, and we're glad that you're joining with us tonight. Hey, send in a question. If you have a question for us tonight, we'll try to make sure we answer it as appropriately as we can. So we're going to dive into the Word, and we're going to talk a little bit about sacrifice. You know, uh, and, and we, ult- we ultimately know as Christians, as a believer, uh, the greatest sacrifice, an example of sacrifice, is Christ. He's our greatest model uh, of sacrifice. And so we want to we want to go to some scripture in, in John chapter fifteen. I want to read a couple verses, verses twelve and verse thirteen. Now, this is Jesus talking about talking, and he was saying in verse th- uh, uh, twelve. This is my commandment. In other words, one of the first things that Jesus wanted us to catch here, and he's going to be talking about loving one another, because uh, I think you can re- can't really understand forced commitment of sacrifice if there's not some dimension of understanding of love and commitment to love. Right. You got to love what you do. Absolutely. You got to love the commitment you're making and and the reason why you're making that commitment. In in this case. Uh, so Jesus tells us, this is my commandment, that you love one another as I've loved you. So, you know, uh, I wanted to, I wanted to kind of talk to you a little bit about that. Is, as we think about the commitment and the struggles that, uh, I say you guys, those that serve and, and those that, uh, your family, you have to, you have to pick up and move with assignments and all around and raise your family uh, and travel and do all those kind of things. Uh, what becomes? What's one of the? Uh, a se- maybe several, but what are some of the things that you rely on to keep yourself in, in moving forward and the commitment you need to 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 do the sacrifice to do what you've signed to do? Talk, talk about that a little bit. Yeah, and dive into that. <laughs> so, you know, I'll tell you. You know, for 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 my house is is obviously going to be it's got you know hands down um, having our foundation set on the word um, and trusting that everything that comes up, every path every obstacle, every change of direction, every change of orders, every whatever comes our way that is his will and, and he, he already has it laid out for us, we just have to be available and obedient to whatever it is that he says, so for us it's a, it's a, a complete abandonment of self and saying, okay, God, if this is what you want us to do, then we'll go. Um, and that's 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 our heart behind it. So um, the thing that helps us to, to keep pushing through is knowing, okay, this is where he wants us. This is where he has us. Um, and um, and then we, we, we go and we say, all right, you know, let's, let's go. Yeah. So, yeah. So, so it's love of God, uh, mm-hmm. first of all. Mm-hmm. And it, it, it's, it's uh, would you say it's also a love of commitment to your family, your service family, that your your the, the, your group or your family or and your country yeah. in general, yeah. because ultimately, uh, it, for many, it, it, it came to that ultimate call yeah. to sacrifice. Right. You know, the ultimate sacrifice. So, w- is that not you know, a driving factor that people, that those that serve in the military, they love their country? Patriots, yeah. they, 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 you know, they love each other, right. you know, right. and that commitment and, and sacrifice to, as what the scripture here, Jesus says, love one another. Mm-hmm. You know, uh, is that not something that's a very strong foundation in service? It is, it is, and I'll tell you that um, a lot of people that I have come across, you know, in my career and just um, had that opportunity to uh, know their story, know where they've come from. Um, a lot of them have come to the military looking for that commitment, looking for family, looking for, so they've come from homes or situations where they didn't have it. And they, they, they said, hey, this was the next best thing. Um, and so they come in and that's where they find that family, that's where they find that, that close-knitness, that commitment, 
um, and then is and, and, and then they under, and then they are committing to something that's bigger than themselves. Yeah. So in the process of them going through basic and AIT training and going through all of that, they're indoctrinated into that mindset of commitment and, and the Army values and all those things that uh, that we stand for. Um, and so the, it's a training, it's, it's a molding that happens. Um, and so um, a lot of times, you know, uh, people come in, you know, I, I will take, obviously, 9-11, I think, changed a lot. I think it changed um, a lot for uh, this this current generation and how we see things and um, just being willing to go into uh, combat and, and into war uh, to, to basically, you know, do what is necessary. But, um, you know, I think it's moments like that that brings us together, that, that ignites that fire of sacrifice and commitment because of, of situations like that. So, yeah. yeah. So I think, you know, I, I think that's one of the powerful things. So, so in this verse, Jesus was saying, love one another as I loved you. In other words, so it's example. It's, it speaks to, and it speaks about uh, some core values. And that's what Jesus was trying to get us in. So, so the core value of Christ and, the, and, uh, and who he is, is that I love you, so I've set the example for you, and now you love one another. Uh, and then by loving one another, it begins to set the right culture. You know? So when I when I think about uh, those that serve in the military, those that give uh, and ultimately sacrifice themselves to to serve to protect this great nation and the people in this nation, you know, because uh, that's what the nation is is the people. Um, I think it has to. It really is something that touches my heart. Is because in being a ministry, it you have to you have to create the right culture within yourself to do the task. Right, and that's what kind of my opinion is. Kind of one of the things that Jesus is trying to do here is, is love has to be the core value. Right, the loving Him, the loving each other, right. and then out of that, uh, you do what you're called to do and let it be done in the format of love. Right. You know, so I think that's one of the, one of the powerful thing about sacrificing yeah. because it's not about money. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, you know, I can only relate to the ministry because I've been in ministry a long time. Uh, and, and it was never, it's, it's not about any of the uh, proceeds of natural things that come with it. It's about, it's about out of that core values of loving people right. And loving him first of all, and then let his love flow through us to be able to serve others. Right. Isn't that not what the military really does? And yeah. generally speaking, absolutely, yeah. <laughs> yeah. And, and, uh, and I think a lot of times, you know, uh, whether whether you have believers or non-believers, you know, they don't necessarily know that's what they're actually doing, yep. right? But but that's that's what it is, right? And a lot of times you'll hear people say, you know, I do it because others can't do it. Mm -hmm. um, and so you have to have a love for people. Right, in order to to be able to say, hey, I'm, I'm gonna you can't do, do it. it, I'll do it. All right, right, right. right. And so, uh, or, or a love for, uh, yeah, just a love for people, and, and just really saying, okay, hey, like, um, you know, you are able. I don't want to go and do it, or I'm gonna go and defend you. I'm gonna defend, you know, the rights, you know, that we have and things yeah. like that. But also, uh, go and free people from oppression. Yeah, um, out, that's out in the world, in other countries, and things yeah. like that. Yeah. So. Yeah. Amen. 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 So, and here's the verse I really wanted to kind of get to. Uh, verse 13. It says, Greater love have no man than this, that a man would lay down his life for his friend. Mm -hmm. You know, what Jesus, again, was setting culture uh, in the kingdom, mm -hmm. right? As Christians, we understand the kingdom of God. Uh, and, and so what Jesus wanted us to understand is, is our actions, uh, the stance that we take, uh, of, of uh, reaching out, helping others, doing those things. It, 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 you know, it has to show forth this, uh, not a talk of love, right. but uh, an action of love. That's right. And love will cost you to bring you to sacrifice. That's right. You can't really walk in love that's right. and it don't cost. That's right. And that's what sacrifice is. Generally, it's a cost, right? right? right. <laughs> so so in this verse for me is, it, so Jesus gives an example uh, that, that there's no greater love than a man would lay down his life for the other. So when I, was, when I was reading that scripture and was kind of thinking about the show tonight, 
that was one of the things that just kind of pulled out of out of my heart for all those that, that uh, serve and, and uh, are serving today, have served, many that gave their life over the years. Mm -hmm. uh, they laid down their life right. for, for some that are not even grateful, right. some that don't even uh, consider the sacrifice, right. but they did it anyway. You know, right. and 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 uh, and that's a great that's a, for me. Uh, you know, I think about what Jesus did is the greatest example of, of love. Mm -hmm. But mm -hmm. and that's what he was teaching us here is that to serve humanity. And to me, one of the things that burdens my heart is is it seems as though the the, the armed services those that serve our country. In whatever form that is, and tonight we're focusing on the military. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, it's just not respectful being respected and understood. Mm -hmm. Oftentimes, in gratitude by so many people, mm -hmm. uh, and, and it and it comes with great cost. Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. so so you kind of talk about maybe talk about that a little bit. <laughs> yes, yeah, so well, I, I, um, I often tell people, um, real love uh, hurts. Real love is painful. Um, when you understand what Christ did, you understand the crucifixion, you understand the, the pain and the torture and everything that he went through, the suffering that he went through, um, that, is, that is real love. He did it for us so that we can live, so that we would have eternal life, so that we would be you know, set free. Right. And so, um, so I often tell people all the time, real love hurts. Real love is painful, right? And, and, then, and then get them to understand, hey, listen, like, the ultimate right sacrifice, the ultimate sacrifice that Christ did for us, and then, and then when you put that into, um, you know, our own lives, right? And if we truly understand what He did, we truly understand what real love is. Then we would understand that this is the, this is the steps, this is the path that we are to follow, um, just like that. And so, um, and when it comes to, uh, um, I think people are not understanding that. Um, I, I think that's um, kind of an understanding, you know. I think the ones that truly understand are the ones that actually live it, that actually do it. Um, and then some, some will say, you know, they understand it, but I don't think you truly understand it until you go through it, right? until you experience it, um, until you lose somebody, until you uh, uh, until somebody uh, dies that you're close to, um, you know, on the battlefield, whatever it may be, from that standpoint. So I think um, uh, we can say we understand it, but I don't think you truly understand it until we actually experience it and go for it. So, so I want to just take a moment right now. You know, so Joanne, thanks for joining with us. Uh, some may have joined and I didn't get to see you, but because uh, this is really uh, this the show tonight in this context for me is very very touching. Because there's uh, there's maybe some that is watching and will watch. It feels like maybe they're hurt uh, that their sacrifice wasn't uh, considered, mm -hmm. or uh, maybe they feel maybe you're watching it, or maybe you will watch and you feel like, well, you know, I served and uh, and it, to an ungrateful people to some mm -hmm. some degree. Mm -hmm. I just want to say to you tonight, you know, that. The Lord, we appreciate what you do, and certainly, um, you know, the Lord is should be the reason. And it truly, tonight, if you'll turn your heart to the Lord, He's the one that will really uh, help you to understand that your life really is about Him. Yeah. And what we do for others is just a backdrop or a a benefit of, of really knowing the Lord. So I, I pray for you tonight. I pray that you that that uh, you know. Oftentimes, when we do good and we do for others, it goes unnoticed. Um, but that's part of sacrifice. Right. But the motive has to be, I think, uh, as the scripture teaches, if it's real love, right. then uh, we're not doing it for recognition. Right. And I'm sure that many across the country and across our uh, this great nation that serve and protect us and standing on that wall tonight, you know, uh, protecting us. We want to say thank you. Uh, and I know you're doing it for the right, uh, hopefully for the right motive. And that motive is you love your country, you love your family, 
and uh, and I want to hope and pray that if you don't know the Lord, that you'll get to know the real love, and that's the love of Jesus Christ, because He changes our life. Amen. Amen. He gives life meaning. Amen. Uh, and so I just want to kind of throw that in a little bit. And so sacrifice can be very, very costly. Uh, it comes with a great cost, uh, oftentimes. Uh, one of the things that uh, I always try to tell folks prepare for ministry or young men and women going into ministry, if you're not willing to pay the price, uh, then don't sign on the dotted line mm -hmm. because it's going to cost you. Mm -hmm. You know, and I think what you guys do, men and women that serve in our military and, uh, and things that they do, it costs us. Right. It costs us time right. away from your family. It costs, and, and that's all those are sacrifices right. Right. that, you know, that you don't, everybody don't have to do. Uh, so, so talk a little bit about that, man. Just, just uh, maybe look in that camera. Maybe there's a, a, a young lady or a young man that's that's uh, serving. Maybe they're just struggling, you know, a little bit. You know what I'm trying to say? Maybe you, uh, just just speak to them, you know, for for just a moment. Encourage them about, the, you know, their sacrifice. God knows it. And so, uh, yeah. So. Um so I would say definitely um, when it comes to sacrifice, it comes to um, not um, not feeling appreciated, I would say, for for your sacrifice. I think that um, I, had a, I had a comment, I had a uh, conversation with this soldier today, and um, the conversation wrapped around um, knowing your purpose, right? And so even though uh, there may be this lack of appreciation, this lack of, of of knowing from others and anything like that. Is remembering your purpose so that the anger and the bitterness and the unforgiveness and all those things don't come in, and, and remembering why God put you there in the first place. And if you keep your eyes on that, that's what it, that is what will keep you in the right heart posture uh, for whatever it is that He calls you to do. Um, and so I think that that's, that is the, the key to uh, not being resentful, not, not getting to that place of bitterness, um, not feeling appreciated is, what is my purpose? Why am I here? Why does God have me here? And ask those questions, pray those questions, right? Yeah. And, then, and then God will slowly start to reveal those things, you know, as time goes on, as you work through, you know, whatever it is that you need to work through. But, um, you know, I would say that the biggest thing is is keeping your eye on what it is that He has you there for. Now, ultimately, it's to be a reflection of Him, right? But um, He has us located where we are for for a reason, for a purpose. And so, when you take your eyes off of that, if you focus on all the things that aren't good, the things that you know, yeah. and that's when all of the um, you know the bitterness and just anger and all that stuff comes in, the complaining and yeah. all those things that that come along with it. Um, that's when those things uh, start to settle in and they take a hold of your heart. Yeah. yeah. So, <clears throat> so our next next uh, discussion we want to dive in a little bit is we're going to talk a little bit about honor. Um, <clears throat> and uh, you know, our country and uh, our nation is in a transformation. I think uh, everybody can agree with that. And we're not talking politics. I'm not here to talk about politics. I'm talking about, I, I do believe that we can all be honest and say that times has changed. Our, our, our people has changed. Everything has changed. Uh, rather, if we look at it in a negative, we look at it in a positive. I think you probably can see both a little bit of both in there. But uh, one of the things that should never change is that uh, of understanding about how powerful honor is, and you give honor, you get honor. In other words, you you know. And I think I think that's one of the things that, as we as Christians, uh, struggle sometimes as well in the body of Christ. And so, uh, I think that's probably one of the core values you guys in the military. I think that's probably one of your foundational things you guys are taught, or or a culture that you try to make sure it's spread. And in your units and, and what you do. So I want to I want to go to a scripture tonight. It's in First Peter chapter two, 
So again, thank you guys for joining with us and uh, comment. And hey, if you have a question, hey, send it in. We'll try to make sure that we'll, we'll try to give you an answer. So I want to talk a little bit about honor a little bit, and uh, and then in this Second uh, Peter chapter two, uh, it's really a good. It's some real good reading from verses eleven through twenty five. But we certainly can't dive into all that tonight. But uh, but the, the the it's categorized as Christian submission. In other words, learning how to be submissive, learning how to understand authority, uh, and learning how to respect others. Yeah. Uh, man, if we ever needed a lesson in that in our society, in our world today, right. uh, I think. And that, I think, uh, I never served in the military, but I think that's probably one of you guys' key things, that understanding authority is, is paramount. Right. And, and submitting to a third authority <laughs> is paramount. <laughs> in other words, Absolutely. From, from what little bit I know about uh, ranks. So so it is as Christians as well. Uh, if we're going to be successful to hear the Lord say well done and be successful in our call and what God's uh, purpose for our life, we've got to learn how to submit. Right. We've got to learn how to understand authority that God's uh, ordained civil authority, uh, government authority, uh, ultimate authority, which is God himself. Uh, and so uh, this sets of scriptures kind of talks and dives into that a little bit. So I'm not diving into all that, but I do want to read a couple yeah. verses. It says for, in verses 15, For so is the will of God, that with well-doing ye may put to silence the ignorance of foolish men. In other words, so he's backdropping after you know being submitted to one another, the ordinances, government or the civil authorities, those kind of things, which are all ordained by God, right. uh, and uh, and everything. So he was talking about. So is the will of God uh, about doing good, and, and then by doing good, you silence the critics of foolish men, is what the scripture here says. So doing the right thing. Uh, in a uh, in a a society today is not popular. Right. Doing the godly thing is not always popular, right. but doing the right thing is acceptable for the Lord, right. and will bring honor in our lives. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So and that that's kind of I think one of the things here I wanted to, to kind of say in this verse. In verse sixteen, it says, "As free and not using your liberty uh, for a cloak of, of maliciousness." but as the servants of God. So, and in verse 17, it says, Honor all men, and love the brotherhood, and fear God, and honor the king. So Paul was writing, or Peter was writing here to the believers, and he gives us some instructions. In other words, don't take our liberties and freedoms as a Christian and to cast off restraints. Right. Uh, so many people are looking for freedom to do whatever they want to do. Mm -hmm. That's not real freedom. That's right. really deceive bondage right. 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 <laughs> truth yeah. of the matter is yeah, yeah. Uh, so one of the one of the great tasks that the military uh, has a, such a weight and a burden upon their shoulders is to enforce liberty and freedom so I wanted you I wanted you to kind of talk about that a little bit and then how important my question would be is is uh, we know that, that all freedoms comes with a cost, right? right? Nothing's just free, right? right? right. <laughs> People say salvation is free. No, salvation <laughs> it was, it was not free. <laughs> yeah, it's, a, it, it's a gift, right. but it's not free. Right. In other words, it cost Jesus his life. Right. <laughs> and the truth of the matter, my belief uh, as a, as a, a st uh, study of the scripture, as a believer and to please the Lord, it will cost you your life. That's right. <laughs> you must give, you must surrender, give up your yeah. life. He that save his life shall lose his life. Yeah. You know, you know yeah. the scripture. Yeah. So, uh, I think freedom and and all that uh, can can is very very important, yeah. and, and the cost of that. And, and but he says here, honor all men. In other words, to have an, a heart and acting. One of the things that I always I always respected, and always caught my attention, being around men and women that served in the military was one of those that trait. Mm. It was just a it was just a culture. Mm -hmm. I want you to talk about that a little bit. Talk about the culture? Yeah, okay. culture of okay. honor okay. And, and and some of the things about that. Because certainly there's some folks there's some folks maybe watching, 
certainly our society needs to be schooled a little bit, in my opinion. Uh, not being negative, but you know, understanding the honor uh, and, and the value of honor, and 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 without honor, without you know, what can what where it can lead us to. So I, I, I just wanted to go on and just kind of dive into that a little bit. Yes. Put, your, put in your words. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, you know, and, and, you know. I think it starts with the mindset or the mentality um, when you come in is um, striving to do the hard right instead of the easy wrong. And I think that that's that's kind of the the, the starting point, right, for anybody coming in. Right. What does that look like, right? Mm -hmm. Um, and 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 that is uh, operating in a way that is honorable, right? Remembering who you are and what you represent. So doing the things that are going to be seen as honorable, right? Doing the things that will be um, uh, that is honorable behavior or, or honorable actions and how you carry yourself, how you interact with people, all those different things that that play into it. And that's all trained, you know. In the very beginning, you know, basic training. As soon as somebody walks through the door, they basically, you know, strip you down, you know, of anything that you have really been taught, you know, growing up, and rewire you, rewire your heart, rewire your mindset um, to buy into the culture that you're walking into. So I think that's where that's where the beginning part of it starts. After kind of like the psyche shit, right, right, right. right. <laughs> um, and so, so really, yeah, getting rid of like breaking down. Of, of the things that you bring into it um, from your own personal experiences at home, things like that, and um, growing up, whatever it may be. Um, and so once you once you uh, go through that process, that stripping down of who you were when you walked in, um, then they build you back up, right? And so they build you back up in a way that will um, uh, be a reflection of, of the image that they want you know, you to, to stand for, right? So to be honorable men and women, um, to be loyal, to, to be trustworthy, to be all those things, those army values, everything that um, they want to instill in you. And, and that goes for any branch. Every branch goes through that process. Um, and so once you go through that, that cultural uh, indoctrination, right? Um, yeah. Then um, they expect you to live it. They expect you to live it. Um, and, and that goes through respecting you, you know, those that are over you, your authority, the, the, the ranks, the higher uh, uh, ranking uh, people who are over you and responsible for you. Um, and then the idea is that as you go through that process, they're training you to prepare to lead others that come behind you. Um, yeah. So that, you know, so all that, so that what they're indoctrinating into you, that the culture and how we handle ourselves, how we carry ourselves, um, how your uniform looks, you know, how your hair looks, like all those different aspects that go with it um, is in preparation for you to lead others uh, when, when your time comes. And so um, when you have that, you know, and then you add on top of that the sacrifice piece of it, um, it, 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 it breeds a mentality of, of um, just pride you know there's a sense of pride that comes from that you know yeah. and saying hey like i'm i am a part of something that's bigger than myself yeah. um, and so when when i when i have that mentality then i will go above and beyond i will go and do the things i will push that next that next level that i need to um because it's the honorable thing to do yeah. um so i hope that kind of yeah, so yeah. I, I think that, that's good. That's a good, good uh, thing. I think one of the things uh, that I, I, you know, I always heard this, and I hope this is correct, is that one of the codes that the military kind of lives by is that no man left behind. In other words, so, so I guess that is that true, right? Yeah. That's a true saying, yeah, right? Absolutely. So the sacrifice of caring for one another and honoring each other uh, in brotherhood. It, you know, just really, really stirs me because as being a believer and us as Christians, it's an area that we've got to become better at. We've got to, to instill honor in others right. and, and then live out honor in them within ourselves. Right. I, I think that's kind of one of the things that the scripture here was trying to get us to do is, is in verse 17, he just really just comes out and say, hey, you honor all men. 
In other words, we as believers, and uh, and I think I think the enemy just frowns and laughs when we when we continue to show disrespect for each other and uh, and harm to each other. Right. Man, I'll always see the day that hearts can be knitted together uh, in love and honor and respect in each other. Yeah. Um, uh, and, and my certain my prayer is to to see more of that. Right. Uh, uh, and, and so uh, that's one of the things that has always stood out with me in, in, in military. I did many um, uh, funerals where they did the uh, flag and the full, full honors and stuff. And uh, man, it always it always just speaks volumes. Uh, one of the last ones I did, it was a very very good friend of mine. He was a minister at, at, through Turning Point. A uh, good friend of mine, neighbor, uh, David Henson. Uh, many of those that are watching tonight know him. and uh, He was a great guy. Uh, he passed away, and he, he had full honors. Uh, and I did his funeral. And um, and they did the whole flag thing, the guns. Actually, I got one of the sh- I got a couple of shells yeah. that they yeah. shot, you yeah. know, as a souvenir. And I put it up. I wrote on there, you know, his name. Right. And stuff, uh, but what it speaks about, it speaks about even in the great sacrifice, even in the times of no more service, but yet the code of honor continued on, and I think that's that's so honorable, yeah. you know. So also for all you that are serve and do serve, man, don't ever let that don't 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 uh, let that feel like that that's not noticed, because I think many people do notice that. And I think that's that's very very powerful. And so uh, I'd say to all of us that are living in this free country, uh, should make sure that we we give honor where honor is due. <laughs> uh, and uh, we want to say thank you again to to all you that serve and all you that have served. Uh, you may have loved ones that's, uh, that that uh, gave their life uh, to for us to have the freedoms that we enjoy. And uh, we, let us live with honor. And, and respecting each other, so that's that was my second little step there with that. Okay, <laughs> so our next one, next one that I want to dive in a little bit to is is the cost and the power of liberty uh, and freedom. So um, good to see those hearts flying. Hey Amen. Good to have y'all. You guys just keep uh, again. If you have a question, hey. Send it in, put it up, post it up, and we'll you, uh, we'll try to get you an answer to it. So appreciate you uh, joining in again with us tonight. So a great guest with us, a uh, great man of God. It's been, man, it's awesome to have you with us tonight. I hope you enjoyed as much as I am. You know, uh, I, I never, uh, again, you know, I kind of chickened out joining the military, but, but I know now God had a different purpose for me. But, uh, uh, you know, I always uh, have great, and respect and and honor those that serve, and uh, because of I never take freedom lightly. Mm-hmm. And uh, I have to admit, you know, uh, probably what spurred some degree of, of us having this uh, this show tonight and this subject uh, was for me that uh, last weekend, Fourth of July. It seemed like. Uh, the, the real honor and respecting for what it's the, the heart of freedom uh, just oftentimes just to be taken for granted mm-hmm. you know maybe I, that's just me but you know uh, I don't think it's just me I think I, I can look around and see that uh, and it's so sad as us as a people that it takes tragedy right. oftentimes to wake us up to right. that 9/11, for example, was was a prime example. Mm-hmm. I remember it very, very vividly. Uh, I remember after the churches was full. Mm-hmm. <laughs> every right. church, every church was packed out for right. for a couple months after 9/11. Yeah, right. uh, and then uh, then kind of dwindled away from there. Yeah. But I remember how our government, our officials, those that that led our lead was leading our country at the time came together and prayed and those kind of things. And along to see today that we can really understand. So, but but I I, I want to dive in a little bit some conversation about liberty, and so we're going to Galatians chapter five, and I'm gonna just read one verse tonight, 
we we all know as believers we believe the word of god and we believe that christ come and gave his life that we could we could have freedom and be at liberty to save us and deliver us from sin mm -hmm. and from the power of sin so we live as a believer we live in the liberties of christ's sacrifice yeah. right yeah. that we could walk in true freedom right. uh and we're so thankful for that because mm -hmm. uh uh, but we're we're, wanna, we're we're focusing a little bit tonight on uh, the sacrifice and honoring of our, our service men and women, and uh, and I want to kind of focus uh, a little bit on that and be show some gratitude and thankfulness to say thank you for the freedoms that we oftentimes take for granted. Uh, so, verse five, uh, chapter five, verse one says, "Stand fast, therefore, in the liberty wherewith Christ has made us free." Now, again, Paul's writing Galatians to believers, and he and he tells us in this verse here, first of all, we need to take a stand mm -hmm. to to not fight for liberty, in, in, in our case as a Christian, but stand in liberty. Right. So li liberty is not just freedom, it's also a lifestyle. Mm -hmm. That's right. <laughs> right? Yeah. So that's what this scripture kind of gets us to try to, Paul was trying to get us to broaden our thinking a little bit that it's not just an, an act, but it's a lifestyle. I must live with a mindset and an attitude that uh, that I'm living in freedom mm -hmm. and, and understanding uh, the cost of that. Mm -hmm. uh, and so uh, I, I think for one thing that I wanted to kind of talk with you about, and maybe you can kind of express with us a little bit with this, is that, that, that as, as a nation, uh, we fight amongst ourselves. We do all these here kind of crazy things, but people are people, right. uh, and, and uh, we know that Satan ultimately is doing what he does in the backgrounds and areas and arenas and people's lives and and, and structure and organization and, and do what it, the enemy does. Mm -hmm. We we know all bad comes from him, right? right. So, uh, but. Is it is is do we really consider a lifestyle of freedom? Yeah, on um, y'all, you guys' perspective, how how do you guys handle it? You know, I mean, just just kind of get share it. Maybe I don't want to get. I don't. Yeah. I'm not trying to get too deep <laughs> in any emotions or feelings or anything. Yeah, but I'm just, yeah. I'm just, and and certainly I'm not trying to put anyone down in any way. Uh, but you know. Um, <clears throat> Jesus said in the scripture, he says, uh, occupy until I come. So freedom is, doesn't just stay freedom by one act. Mm -hmm. Freedom has to continue right. to be fought right. in many different arenas and areas. Right. As a nation mm -hmm. and as us as a Christian, we may be walking in freedom or, or deliverance in one particular area, but then we have bondage in another particular area, even though he is set us that free, free right? we have to enforce the mindset and the lifestyle of freedom right. on a spiritual aspect right. we also i believe need to do that as a people yeah. as a nation yeah. to to because i think when we really understand and live a lifestyle of freedoms what comes with that is the picture of freedom brings us to gratitude mm -hmm. thankfulness and helping others mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. The, you know, you're, yeah, you're, so absolutely. so with you guys, uh, the cost for many thousands, thousands through the years, and you know, um, I always tell folks this: history, history is history. Uh, history is uh, can't be changed. Right. Uh, good, bad, and ugly. Right. It's, it's got it all wrapped up in it. Right. But it, but it, it played a factor uh, to get us where we are. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, and and so. I just wanted you to kind of talk a little bit about that and from your heart a little bit about the freedoms and liberties you know, of Christ and and what you guys standing on the walls, you know, to to help this nation to continue to be free and you guys continue to be forcing freedom, right. enforcing freedom on a daily basis. Right. So let's talk yeah. about that a little bit. I know that's a little deep. It's a little tough out there. I don't want me to put you on the spot, no, but uh, <laughs> That's good. You know, I, um, I love what it says. So, in so my Bible says, "Stand fast." Yeah. Right. Therefore, in the liberty 
um, by which uh, Christ has made us free. And, you know, I will tell you that um, one of the ways that I feel like we, you know, being a service member, understand that is uh, when we go to other countries and we see the oppression, we see uh, the freedoms that other people don't have that we have over here. And it gives us the, a different perspective um, uh, of experience and just everything else that we've seen through that whole process. And then we come back home and then we see, you know, just just everybody doing whatever they want to do, right? right? You know, obviously, you know, we have walls and things like that, but but but, but it's a it's a whole different lifestyle, right? Yeah. Um, and then, but but they're they're still not free in their mind. They're still not free in their heart. They're still held captive to, um, you know, whatever it is, whatever bond is, whatever it is that they have, right? So, all, all that to say is, is that I think from from our experience, from overseas, from seeing different aspects, different cultures, uh, all of that, I think it gives us the perspective of not taking for granted the things that we do have here, the things that we do. And I will tell you that, you know, um, you know, just our experience and just seeing, you know, other cultures and, and, and different countries and things like that, um, it is good to come home. <laughs> you know, it's good to come home when, when, when we are able to, to come back and and, and come back in, but I will tell you that um, the perspective of freedom and the perspective of liberty, um, you have a completely different perspective when you go over it and you experience something completely different and you see that. Um, so uh, from, the, from the standpoint of, of, of Christ and just being free, um, I, think, I think it goes back to what you said earlier about um, uh, being a lifestyle, understanding, hey, like, he has set us free, but every day I have to have that mindset, I have to have that heart and walk in that. And that doesn't mean you can go do whatever you want to do. Scripture mm -hmm. clips tell us that, hey, look, you're not free to just go sin and do whatever. Right. But but there there is there is a, a freedom in Christ and knowing, hey, he has set us free. He set us free from the bondage and, and anything else that has had a stronghold. Um, but believing that, one, knowing that, and then walking in that. Right. Um, and so... Um, I think from that standpoint, um, it's, it, is, uh, it is definitely, um, when you understand that and you grasp that, uh, you have a whole different perspective. You have a whole different just mindset about life. Um, and you don't, look at, you don't look at the word as uh, just rules. You don't look at it as, you know, they're just telling me what I can't do or it's going to tell me or... You know, I, I can't go out and have fun. Like, no, you don't look at it that way. You look at it as you look at it as a love letter, really. Yeah. And you say, "Man, this is this is God's love letter to us to basically, you know, allow us to experience the fullness of what He has for us." Mm -hmm. um, so, um, so that's that's kind of that's kind of my, my 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 thought on that. Um, but I will tell you, uh, when you experience something else in a different country, um, your perspective on liberty. And freedom is completely different uh, mm -hmm. when you come back. Amen. Yeah. Uh, I, and I think, you know, I think that's kind of, uh, you know, and we go on and on about it, but, you know, I think that's one of the, the hard things for me is, you know, I long to see today, and, you know, and, and I want to say personally again to all those who are watching service meeting women, you know, for me, uh, my heart is I want to say thank you. I don't take freedom lightly. I, I, I thank God for it. Thank God that uh, we, we live in the country we live in. Yeah. I've been overseas and I've seen some of the some stuff, not what you guys get to see or, or live in. But uh, yeah, we are a blessed, blessed nation, and and I pray that we'll 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 learn the heart of God about being willing to sacrifice and give of ourselves for the betterment of others. Yeah. I think that's a key for 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 all of us yeah. to have that heart as Jesus showed us to do is to prefer our brother above ourselves. Mm -hmm. And then say to all, you know, uh, I, I want to say, you know, give honor and uh, you can get honor. Be respectful, be loving, be encouraging to each other. Let's build each other up. Let's don't tear each other down. Uh, and and uh, 
be respectful, man. Let me. I want to put a challenge to you. Praise the Lord. Pass it on. You see, you, listen. I want everybody's watching. Uh, listen this week. In the next couple of weeks, I want you to buy a service man or, or woman a meal. You see him in a restaurant, pay it forward. Right? I'm gonna challenge you. <laughs> so, well, Pastor, you don't know how difficult it is. Be a blessing. Amen. I just want you. I just want to encourage you. I just come. That just come in my heart. It didn't cost you nothing. I'm just just telling you. Amen. Be a blessing. Pass it on. Amen. I, I just think they need. I don't know why, per se, God really put it in my heart so much, but my heart just really is so burdened because I feel like the morale of, of our armed forces is being attacked, and they need lifting up. Yeah. They need encouraging. They need prayer uh, because without them, uh, you know, we would not be able to have what we have today, and, and I, I am truly grateful. So in finishing, and our finishing t- comments and fixing to wind up tonight in this verse he goes on to say this that he had made us free but he gives us a warning and be not entangled again with the yoke of bondage so one of the assignments that Christ has for our life is that he is doing a work in our life as a believer and he wants us to walk in freedom and liberties of Christ to 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 live with honor and respect and uh, be willing to sacrifice and love each other and walk out the purpose and destiny of God. Chris, man, it was just a blessing to have you with us Thank tonight. I'm so thrilled me. to have you, man. And I appreciate your time. And, uh, and, um, and, and, and I just pray that those that are watching tonight, and uh, especially if, you're, if you've served uh, and, uh, and, and you're struggling in some arena, so you reach out to someone. I want you to know that Jesus Christ is the ultimate sacrifice. He gave his life that you could live. And because he lives, we can live also. And tonight, he's calling you to himself. You know, by his sacrifice, he's showing us his love. And so tonight, uh, I'm praying for you. Don't give up. Amen. Uh, Walk in honor. And God, uh, even though it may seem others may not respect that, but you do it, and and you what you whatsoever a man sow it, that shall he also reap. Amen. So you give honor, you get honor. So uh, uh, live it out, and then walk in the freedoms that Christ has, has given to us, and, and and live your life in the way that is pleasing before the Lord, and He'll bless your life. Well, we want to pray for you tonight before we close. Uh, uh, again, thank you, Heather, for the comment. You know, as oftentimes many of us can be very selfish and only think about ourselves. And that's the reason maybe the, maybe God put this show together tonight is that, you know, we could just be spurred and our hearts just stirred, uh, you know, in these uh, trying times uh, that we be thankful for the men and women that are standing on the wall. Uh, because there's there's a lot of stuff out there and a lot of people out there that would love to do us harm. Uh, and so we thank God for your service. Chris, thank you for your service. And, uh, thank you. Thank you for what you do in your family uh, and your sacrifice. And uh, as you carry yourself as a man of God and also as a service man in honor, I appreciate you. And uh, man, I pray God's blessings over your life. So we're going we're gonna to pray for for our audience tonight, Chris. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to start out, okay. and I'm going to let you close it. Okay. Would you do that Sounds for good. us tonight? All right. So let us pray. Our Heavenly Father, we thank you tonight. We thank you for our time together with our brother. And as we go live, and we've been live tonight, those that are watching, those that will watch, we pray for that service man or, man or woman that... Uh, Man, maybe they've had bitterness in their heart. Maybe they've been hurt or maybe been disrespected or or maybe they didn't just, uh, their promotion didn't come the way it should or wasn't honored the way they should have been honored. I pray for their healing tonight. I pray for restoration. I pray, Father, that, that you would just encourage them and let them know that what they do is of great service. And Lord, we want to, we, we just pray that you would strengthen and you would touch our nation, our country, our leaders. Lord, we depend on you, Lord. We look to you. You're the author and finisher of our faith. We want to say thank you. Thank you for service and those that serve. So, Father, we bless them in Jesus' name.
Yeah. God, I just, um, yeah, I just, I just want to lift up, um, man, we just finished 20 years of, of, of war, 20 plus years, God. And I just pray, God, for the, the soldiers, God, the service uh, members, God, that, um, man, the wounds, yes. the war wounds, yes. God. Um, I just God. pray, God, that um, you would touch them wherever they may be, God. I pray, God, for healing, God. Yes. I pray, God, that this transition has happened. Things have slowed down, God, that yes, you Lord. have given them, um, man, just the, the, the courage and the heart Lord, to Lord. face Thank the things they need to face uh, from being in war uh, and, and the things they've experienced, God. Um, yes. God, we know um, that you are the true healer. You are the true counselor. And God, I just pray, God, that you, God, wherever wherever they may be, you just touch them, God, um, all over, God. And so, Lord, I just pray, God, for anyone um, that may be struggling, anyone that may yes, be uh, yes, having any yes, issues, Lord. that uh, may be having a hard time finding their purpose, uh, having a yes. hard time finding meaning, um, having a hard time uh, just um, getting uh, back into society, back into um, um this way of living, God. I just pray, God, that you would just comfort them. I pray, God, that you would come alongside and you would provide yes, uh, the people and the support to help them, God, come through on the other side. Um, so, God, we ask you, have your way. Have your way, God. Thank you, God, that you've chosen us to do this great work, God, for your purpose and for your glory. We ask all these things in your precious and holy name. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Well, again, thank you guys, man. Thanks for joining with us tonight. Great host of folks coming on has been on with us tonight live. Thank you for being with us. We appreciate you. We love you. And we're praying for God's blessings to continue to in, uh, just cover your life. Listen, share this, like it. If you have someone that serves or been, uh, that's, that's maybe retired now or whatever, hey, just I pray that it will be an encouragement and just help us to get it out there, and we appreciate you. Hey, getting to the point, I hope it was a blessing for you tonight. Amen to the service men and women across the country and around the world. We ask God's blessings over your life, and we bless you tonight in Jesus' name. Amen. Thanks for being with us.